Welcome to What Are You Sporting About podcast, a podcast about business, employment, sports, and entertainment to help educate, support, and guide you to your next level. Here's your host, Attorney Savania DeBarros. Hi, everybody. It's Savania DeBarros, <laughs> the protector of athletes. And you will have to forgive me today because I am recording live from Cancun Beach with my husband, Eduardo DeBarros. Hello. So today I want to talk to you about mindset and I know that a lot of you have probably been seeing my posts that talk about mindset in one way or another. So here's one thing I want you to think about and I'm not going to quote this verbatim but there is a doctor named Dr. Dweck who wrote a book and she talks about mindset in there. She also described that there are two types of mindset. There is fixed mindset and there is a growth mindset. And one of the things that I love about a particular quote that she was quoted saying was that when you walk into mindset, you enter a new world. And basically those who are dealing with a fixed mindset, they are more worried about trying to prove they belong in a space. Whereas those who enter a world of a growth mindset they are more worried about developing their own lane, right? So that's not verbatim, but that's what I took away from it. So the things that I want you to be cognizant of is if you find yourself just trying to find a seat at someone else's table, trying to prove that you belong, then you may be operating from a fixed mindset standpoint. If you are the type of person that wants to develop and grow and understand why things happen the way that they happen, for instance, if you fail at something, why did it? Why did you fail, right? Because each time that you learn something new, you are developing, and that growth helps you to be able to move and develop into something greater than what your current circumstances are. So, I am going to ask Eduardo, George, some little small trivia questions around athletes and whether they are or have operated in a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. I can't hear you. I'm ready. <laughs> Allison Felix. Growth fix. Growth. Michael Phelps. Come on. Fix. Why you say fix? Because he's always um, trying to uh, <clears throat> I haven't seen anything as far as him developing his own company or anything like that. But do you think you have to develop a company well, to be? I don't think that, to I think that have you a have growth. to move past who you are as an athlete. Um, Felix has designed her own company and has moved forward even when Nike didn't want to sponsor her or believed in her because she has a kid. Yeah, but I Michael, think Michael Phelps, he. Um, he, he develops off of his athletic brands around mental health. You don't think that's growth? Well, yeah, I would, yeah, I would say that's growth. But I think his route was a little easier. Why do you think it was easier? He was able to just say, hey, you know, I do, I do, you know, smoke marijuana and I do this and this how much I eat. And not get penalized for that. If it was someone else, I believe they would have got penalized. But. Okay, well, Colin Kaepernick. Growth fix. Growth. Muhammad Ali. Growth. Uh, Layla Ali. Uh, Layla Ali? Uh, she's growth, but I mean, she is living off the father's hand. But, <clears throat> yeah, but I it's think different. She, just, she did become a champion and then she did um, continue growing past her professional career. Yeah. Her yeah, and I feel like she's creating a, her own lane. Yeah. Um, you know, she's yeah. anchoring shows or hosting shows right. and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. She is, um, she, like you said, she's doing shows now, so it's not like she just did one thing and that's, like, if you look at, um, uh, Fraser's uh, mm -hmm. daughter, all she did was boxing and that was it. She kind of, she kind of lived off her father's uh, fame and never really did anything after that, where Ali, she didn't just stop at boxing, she just kept continue to grow her own name and, and, and her likeness and, yeah. and 
and let that to make uh, keep growing, you know. Yeah. That's after. What about Floyd Mayweather? Oh, bro. <laughs> Many pack of y'all? Bro. Mm. So both of those both of those guys have long their career longer as far as you know creating not longevity. Even retired yet. I mean some of them are retired, Floyd Weather is retired. Pacquiao's still boxing. But at the same time he still um, still goes back to the Philippines and gets gets uh, you know goes into uh, not the government, not the government but being a senator. He, he puts into that, his yeah. community. Right. And Floyd Mayweather, even though a lot of people believe he's selfish, it's always about himself. Um, he has his own his own brand and he has still gets box office. He still receives box yeah, office? Yeah, box office uh, money, even though he's retired. So he's because, getting residual income? Yeah, yeah, so he's really carrying his name. <clears throat> a lot further. A lot further. And, and he's developing other boxes too, so he's, he's going to have his own, mm. you know, boxing school and stuff like that. So. Serena Williams. Oh, bro. Naomi Osaka. Bro, I think bro. even though it's kind of early, I think that she's... Uh, I think she has, I think she may have the right attitude for a long career, yeah. um, but I would I would say for her right now, I think she would kind of be mixed because yeah. I think she's just so young that she's trying to, she's trying to find her own lane. You yeah, know what I'm think, saying? And I think that the, some of the pressure has gotten yeah, to her. Yeah, gotten to her. But I do and see her as, as a person that's going to definitely be a major player of creating so many different lanes where she can you know give back yeah to because community. i think that when you're a mix you know because she's japanese no 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 i ain't talking about mixed that no, was no, no. My... no no i know what oh, you're talking about but i'm just saying when so many people are trying to identify it from one to another as you know the black community or the japanese community why you can't be both you know don't have you oh, don't, you don't lose your japanese card because <laughs> They, they, they think, you know, you're the first black American or, or oh, you don't lose more your black Japanese. people than just Americans. No, I'm just saying that you don't you, you don't lose your Japanese card just because you, you identify yourself as an African American. Yeah. You don't lose your African American card just because you go to the Olympics as a Japanese as you know as, uh, for the Japanese uh, yeah. team. So I think a lot of pressure piled up on her, but I think she handled pretty well. She's gonna to continue to grow as a person, I believe. Yeah, I think so too. LeBron James? Growth all day. Um, Michael Jordan? Growth, I mean. A lot of people didn't like comparing them in the beginning, but you know, I wonder if LeBron actually used to watch Michael Jordan, Pretty you know, sure. as a kid, because he there's so, there's so many similarities between them. Yeah, I think it's, it's very hard to follow someone that's big as Michael Jordan. I think yeah, that's what you're saying. And everything is, oh, you're trying to be like Michael. Yeah. Oh, you're trying to be... I think he made his own name. Yeah. You know, it ain't no... But you know, but what's the harm in wanting to be like someone no. who has no. been created success that is so far away from what people even have the resources to dream about? I, right? Because it, it, there's already a, a issue in the black community where right. you don't have the representation that you need to even right. think that you can dream to do and be all of these things. So what is the harm in that? Right. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any harm in that. I think that the comparison with those two are always on the... Uh, Forefront? On the, on the, on oh. the, ba on the basketball. Oh, okay. Gotcha. How many championships you had and how many, you know, uh, how much, I mean, what, what's your next shoe coming out and, you know, mm -hmm. all the scoring titles and the championships and the, um, you know, rebound titles. I mean, it just, it's all stats. Yeah. That, that I think they're too comparing them, but they are very too successful people. people. Yeah. And it's very hard to follow someone that's been that big. I know, for a and, long time too. And it's hard to make your own brand you know that yeah people can follow so yeah i think that is there's nothing wrong with having a role model like both of them yeah to be like what about chris paul chris paul um me personally i'm not a big fan of chris paul why not i don't know he's just well fix growth 
regardless of whether you a fan or not. Yeah, I'm not a I mean, what I'm saying is that some of the things that he's done, even even being a president of the uh, Players Association. Yeah, Players Association, he's he's more on the owner side, but he has grown because you don't just become a president out of nowhere. Right. You know, you gotta really you have to be set it. the example. You gotta really want to be somewhere. Yeah. And you know, when when people's career goes down at 36, he's he's actually went up. So mm-hmm. he's he's keeping it. He's keep going and he keeps going bigger. And when you have a lot of different resources, you can create your own. Yeah. You know? And it's difficult when you don't have. Yeah. And I think that's the importance of this conversation, though, because when we're looking at athletes, you are given a resource, right? I mean, of course, just like any other business, there are liabilities that you have to plan for, but you are making more money than you probably have will will have ever seen anybody make in one year, you know, or in, you know, two, three years. And so that that is a resource. But if you operate from a fixed standpoint, you'll go back home broke. Yeah. You know, the same yeah. way some other people are because you're so worried about trying to show people or prove something to somebody versus saying, you know what, let me take this little this little nest egg that I've been given and let me go and plant it somewhere so I can grow something for the future. Yeah, like you don't have to have... Like, what's homeboy name that was driving the Toyota to, to practice camp um, and everybody was laughing at him? Um... He played for the Washington Redskins back in Dallas. Um, played for Dallas. His name is slipping my mind right now. I cannot think of this boy's name, but he had a Honda Accord. Honda Accord, yep. Uh, 84, 85 drove, or something. Yeah, like that. he drove it. You know, he drove it every day to work. I mean, just, you know, camping everything and everybody else part with their Porsches and, and Lamborghinis and you stuff. You know, you don't have to have the 2021. Yeah. Bentley. You can have the 2018. Much yeah. Well, and that's, but that's the thing. But you fixed on trying to show people, show people that you belong. That you belong yeah. and how? Okay, look at me. I got the newest mm-hmm. one. This is, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm impressed. You're really not impressing nobody right. about the dealership. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. <laughs> yep. If you if you think Ferrari and Bentley and, and Lamborghinis. Uh, Oh, they making these cars for you. Oh, they yeah. know you are going to be the dumb ones to buy it. Mm-hmm. With the fixed mindset. With the fixed mindset. And then I end up have having to try to sell business. it just to try to cover some bills or something. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. just like a lot of your books that came out, you know, you got to have a team around you. Yeah. And you uh, you can't help everybody. Man. No, you can't. And I know sometimes like people be like, oh, well, that's so selfish of you. You know what? You have to self-preserve. Because if you don't, every damn body going to be... Excuse me, I forgot to say that this is a rated R (laughs) episode. But if you don't self-preserve, you can't help anybody, including yourself. And I think that's even a lesson that I had to learn for me is... There are times where you have to be selfish and it is okay to do that. It is okay to do that. Because if you are stretched too thin you're not good for anybody anybody if you can't pull yourself up i don't see how you can pull anybody else up period point blank yeah and it it also goes goes to you know making sure you have a sound family around you meaning yeah you know and even if it's not family it's like you have a sound right that's what i'm saying family doesn't have to be family Family to be around you. And that you've chosen. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, that you've chosen to be around you. And um, the, yeah. the, the, the uh, problem with, and, and I don't want to take it too far to the left, but you know, when you continue, when these athletes continue to have ch- children from other yeah. women, mm-hmm. and when I mean, a, multiple multiple women okay your money starts to get thinner yeah like um and when your the boxer, career the boxer? is over your 
you still have to pay that. Monthly. Yeah, the boxer. Which what's the guy's name? Holyfield. Um, Holyfield. Yep, Holyfield. Evander Holyfield yeah. had five. I think five. Uh, I think no, three like, divorces. I think. Yeah. But he had like ten. Uh, no, ten or eleven kids. I think. Listen, you can have a family after your career. You don't have to have it during your career. Unless your mind is very strong, like, you know, LeBron James is very strong. He had high school sweetheart, mm -hmm. had a couple of kids, and, and he's been with that person since day one. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about a very small percentage. So yeah. There's nothing wrong with starting a, a family after football or after. Or whatever your sport family. is. Because, like we've talked before, and I've talked to my wife before, your career can be only you four or five years. Your career could only be four or five years, you know? Yeah. So you're talking about after your career at 25. Yeah. Now you got to find out what to do after that, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was good. Yeah, I just don't want to be too far. Any athletes? You know, that, that can be a whole new conversation. Another conversation, whole yeah. Conversation. Any other athletes you want to um, define around, fixed or uh, uh, growth? I would say work done. Mm, yeah, work done. Work done. Um, after his mother, a uh, police officer, was murdered. Yeah. Um, uh, when his career was over, he started building homes for single moms. And if that's if that's your choice in life, and that's what makes you happy, and you make a, a stamp in people's lives with it, yeah. like, man, you know, that person helped me. No one did when yeah. the government wasn't there for no family. He, you know, he was able to build homes for single moms. To and, make a difference. To make a difference. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely a growth and mindset. That's a, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyone else? I mean, I think it's coming to mind right now. I probably don't have a lot, but. Yeah. But no, I think that was a good, a good example just to get the point across, guys, because, you know, this life is nothing but a series of perspectives and what you get out of it is is based on the type of mindset that you bring to the table period if your mind is not right if you're constantly negative about everything that's the type of result that you're gonna receive because that's the only way that you can perceive it if that's how you are right if you are constantly worried about the next person and wondering why you can't advance and you're just feel like you're working so hard to go nowhere you might want to check your mindset and see if you've been operating from a fixed mindset where you're begging for a seat at the table you don't have to beg nobody for nothing because if you're doing something authentic it's from the heart and you truly want to make a difference you're, if you're operating truly in a growth mindset, you're going to make a difference because people with growth mindset, they just find a way to do it, to get it accomplished. Look at me. No one helped me to write these books that I've written. What are you sporting about? And recently athletes making moves. But it was something burning up inside of me knowing that I wanted to help someone. I wanted to make sure that people had a clear roadmap on how to define their own success and how to protect themselves that's a growth mindset and it's going to continue you're going to continue to need that type of mindset um, to take you further into the future where you say that you want to be right and even then there's going to be you're going to have to continue building you're going to have to continue building so anyway i'm going to sign off this is savannah debarros the protector of athletes coming to you live from cancun mexico here with my special guest my husband eduardo de Barros. <laughs> So guys, until next time, yep. I'll check you later. Ciao. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week on What Are You Sporting About podcast. Make sure to visit our website, prosportlawyer.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever your favorite platform is so you'll never miss a show. And while you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or iHeartRadio. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you like the show, you might want to check out our book, What Are You Sporting About? Attorney Savania DeBarros is available for private consulting at sldebarros.com. And remember, we're here to educate, support, and guide you in your journey to success because we're all sporting about something. Thank you.
Thank you.